We have now come to the end of today's program, and uh, it has been a very intense program, as I understand. Uh, I have uh, the pleasure of the last speaker, that is uh, the one who shares with you some thoughts on the main messages uh, that uh, could be drawn um, out of the discussions of today. Well, I think it is quite easy to draw the main conclusion. Uh, financial integration is here to stay at the core of our concerns and at the core of the European agenda. For the future of Europe, it is simply too important uh, to continue to soldier on with uh, the refinement of the European single market. And that we should do with our full determination, even in difficult times as we are in now. From the Euro system's perspective, financial integration is of great importance. It is vital for the single monetary policy of the Euro area. As you know, monetary policy is implemented through the financial system, and therefore we want to have a financial system to be as efficient as only possible in order to guarantee a smooth and effective transmission of monetary pol policy impulses. And you know, and President Draghi has repeated it in nearly every press conference uh, at the beginning of the month, uh, that uh, the difficulties in the transmission process is one of our main, major concerns right now in the monetary policy area. A highly integrated financial system ensures that impulses diffuse homogeneously across the whole euro area. Second, financial integration has implications also for the stability of the markets. Integration results in increasing interconnections and cross-border activity. Usually, we observe that uh, a sound monetary policy, transmission mechanism, and, finan and stable financial markets go hand in hand. And a higher level of integration will therefore be beneficial for our economy, enabling investors to find profitable investment opportunities whenever and wherever they will arise. It will also enhance competition among financial intermediaries and among financial infrastructures and, as a consequence of increased competition, reduce costs. However, highly interconnected systems, and we are fully aware of it, are also prone to increased systemic risks. To avoid those risks, integration in initiatives are being undertaken right now, which plays a very strong emphasis on the safety and resilience of financial markets and infrastructures. I just want to mention also that this afternoon, apparently, the European Parliament uh, has come to a positive outcome in the trialogue uh, with the Commission and the Council on uh, major aspects of the uh, SSM, uh, the single supervisory mechanism, uh, a major part of our banking union project uh, that is being undertaken. But let me now turn to post-trade harmonization, the central theme of this conference. The harmonization of market practices, rules and standards in post-trading is a necessary component of financial integration. Inefficiencies and barriers in clearing and settlement make market access difficult for investors and for issuers. And I think Professor Giovannini already said the same more than 20, nearly 20 years ago. I was not yet in central banking when he first came out with the first drafts of his proposal uh, with the inefficiencies and the barriers uh, in this area. The European securities market cannot be said to be fully integrated if post-trade arrangements are not harmonized, thereby ensuring safety, full competition, and the absence of barriers coming from national markets. This is why both authorities and industry players are making great efforts to achieve post-trade harmonization. Today, we have been offered a comprehensive overview of what is currently happening in Europe at this level. We have heard the European Commission uh, and uh, 
I think we can agree that the speed of financial reforms recently has accelerated and uh, the Commission uh, must be commended uh, for this. Many participants today have underscored the importance of transparency to achieve safer post-trading and to increase the existing level of competition in the industry. We have heard an interesting discussion as well on all the legal initiatives that are on the way at the EU level to remove the barriers that are hindering the single market. Let me just mention, of course, MIFID is being revised to increase investor protection, improve the functioning of EU capital markets. Second, we have the EMIR, uh, which entered into force in uh, summer last year and uh, which requires standard derivative contracts uh, to be cleared uh, through central counterparties and, and establishing also stringent organizational business conduct and prudential requirements for central counterparties. The European Commission proposal for a CSD regulation deserves specific mentioning. It is still under scrutiny by the EU legislators. We hope that this speed of this scrutiny might increase again in the coming weeks and months because uh, it will enhance the legal and operational conditions for cross-border settlement in the Union in general and a strong emphasis has been placed today on the importance of its timely implementation and I would to hope that we can all work into this direction uh, in order that uh, this regulation would uh, still be implemented uh, before the present uh, European Parliament enters into recess uh, for re-election next year. I think it is an essential cornerstone uh, of our um, attempts uh, to uh, fulfill and uh, the present framework uh, that is needed uh, for post-trade harmonization. The representatives of the Parliament and of the Commission today have highlighted the importance and the feasibility of these objectives. And uh, speaking for the Euro system, I have of course no reason to doubt uh, their commitment. Combined, what I just mentioned, MIFID, EMIR, the CSD regulation, and what is another initiative, the securities law legislation, which is due to establish an EU-wide framework for the ownership of securities, and which will also increase the legal certainty in cross-border environments. All this constitutes a new framework for the whole securities transaction chain, from trading to clearing and finally settlement. But it's not only on the legal side that uh, we need to progress. We have also made uh, already some, uh, head, uh, some progress in the operational and business levels. The most notable example, which has, by the way, been mentioned by many of you today, has been uh, T2S, a project with huge potential for market integration. Target 2 securities will en enable the participating CSDs to focus on value-added services while the basic settlement service is provided via the single T2S platform. T2S will thereby make it easier for business to move from one CSD to another. The actors that harmonize in T2S have a greater chance of reaping the full benefits of T2S and widening their business. Conversely, the European CSDs that do not harmonize may see the securities that have been issued via uh, their organization being predominantly in the future settled in another CSD which is participating in T2S and thereby offering a wider scope in a harmonized environment. An area of opportunities mentioned several times today by speakers is collateral management. Some of the regulatory initiatives that I mentioned before, but also business developments which are aiming to enhance safety in financial markets 
are generating greater demand for high quality collateral. At the same time, the crisis is making this collateral scarce. And we try everything to also uh, decrease the encumbrance of assets, uh, which we also follow very closely. There has been a shift from unsecured to secured funding. And I think this is not only a cyclical development, but probably a development that we will see to remain in us for the foreseeable future. We have also seen greater recourse to central bank liquidity, which obviously is always linked uh, to adequate collateral provisioning. The increased demand for collateral is prompting market participants, as well as the euro system, to develop innovative ways to make better use of the existing amount of collateral, that is to make assets more easily ava available when and also where they are needed. Harmonization in this area is crucial to facilitate the efficient mobilization of collateral across Europe. Examples in this respect are auto-collateralization, which is being a, a functionality developed uh, into T2S platform, but also several initiatives that are underway, as for example the tripartite tri settlement interoperability uh, which uh, goes into the same direction. It has clearly emerged from the discussion today that post-trade harmonization is gaining momentum and is also already beginning to achieve concrete results. The example we heard about the more detail is the progress made in the T2S harmonization agenda, the T2S community and the post-trade industry have engaged in implementation of harmonized standards and market practice in areas such as cutoff times, ISO messages, corporate actions processing, account numbering, and also settlement finality. As the president of T2S board, Jean-Michel Godefroy, illustrated earlier today, there is an ambitious plan in place for the coming months and a sound record of achievement so far. I was told that the audience expressed moderate optimism that the priority one harmonization topics would be achieved by the launch of T2S, to which we remain firmly committed. However, there is a lot of work to be done in order to complete all these projects that I mentioned. It has been, therefore, quite interesting to just hear Professor Giovannini, who has been really the pioneer in this area, uh, remind us uh, where we have started from and where we intend to go and to uh, remind us uh, how important it is that we do not lose sight of the final goal. The large participation at this conference today with distinguished speakers uh, from all over Europe, I was told more than 250 participants, is testimony to the joint willingness of both the European and national institutions and market players to achieve post-trade harmonization and thus contribute to the financial integration of our house Europe. Let me stress once more that the cause to which this process is contributing is the single market and is one of making Europe stronger and more attractive for national as well as cross-border investment, thus activating and thus sustaining economic growth. To conclude, let me therefore thank you all for your participation. My particular thanks go, of course, of course also to the speakers and the distinguished panelists for making the discussions uh, lively and thought-provoking. And finally, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those from both the European Commission and the ECB involved in this project of having this day making a day worth remembering. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>